Hey everyone, in this video I want to talk to you about the database transaction function. Uh, this function allows you to uh, define a set of function or a set of operations to be treated as one. Why you would want to do this is because if you have some kind of mission critical flow and one thing messes up and you don't want the other operations to have been performed. So this was actually developed for uh, financial systems because if you think about uh, like money transfers and stuff, um, say the money is taken out of the first account and that all works fine, but something happens with the account it's supposed to go into. Um, you would want the entire transaction to be canceled, right? So only if everything happens successfully will the whole thing go through. So that's what the database transaction functions for. I'll show an example, so hopefully it'll make a little more sense. First, I want to start in the database. Um, I just have a simple account table here um, with this you know, account number, user ID reference, and our balance here. So let me jump over to my functions and I'll show you what I set up um, to do a simple transfer with this database transaction function. So I name this function here transfer. And if you look, it has um, three inputs. So the from account, so where the money's been take, gonna be taken out, the to account, where the money's going to, and the amount of money that's being transferred. And now I have this database transaction function. And the way to find that is go to the function stack, database request, and database transaction, commit all records at once, okay? So I already have one built, so let's take a look. I have five statements in here. So I'm saying that if all these five statements are correct, they don't throw an error, then everything will happen. If one thing throws an error, then it'll cancel the entire transaction. So first we're just getting a record, uh, the from account, and that's what we're using this input for. And then we're getting a record, which is the to account. And now we're editing the record. So let's take a look. So I'm mapping the this account as the from account, and then I'm hiding these other fields. And now in the balance, remember we already got the record for the from account. So I'm taking that variable, saying the from account, and then using dot notation to get to the field of the balance. And now I'm doing a subtract filter, and then I'm putting in the input. So that looks like this, okay? So I'll hit update, I'll hit save, and then I'll come back here. And now I have a precondition, and all this is saying is that the from account balance is greater than or equal to zero. So we don't want this transaction to go through if it's gonna put the from account into a negative value. So my error message would just simply say not enough funds. And lastly, we edit the to account. So we have the input mapped right here, the to account ID. And then the balance, remember, we already got a record of the two account. So we're saying the two account variable dot balance. And then we're adding a filter here as that amount. So I'll go ahead and hit save. So let's go ahead and run this. I'll go ahead and let me reset these values here. So I'll say from account ID one to account ID two. And let's go ahead and transfer over. Uh, we'll just say $5 and I'll hit run. I don't have anything in the response, but let's go over to the database. And in the account, we'll see that now uh, this account one, the balance is 95 and account two is now 15. So we know that transaction was successful also because uh, the debugger told us it ran successfully. Now let's try to transfer um, money that would put account one into a negative value. So let's just say something like uh, $10,000. So if I go ahead and hit run, we'll go, we'll hit this precondition. It says an error occurred, not enough funds. And if we go to uh, the database here into account, we'll see that uh, none of that was actually executed. So um, there you have it. Uh, the database transaction can be used for things that are mission critical. If something messes up, then uh, you don't want uh, maybe your database records to be uh, affected by that. I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.